Um, I was told I'll tell, talk, tell a little about myself first. Um, I was born in Lahore um, at a very young age of about six months, uh, moved to Canada, uh, came back from Canada after spending 14 years and then I did my O levels, A levels and then I went to Aachan. Khan. Uh, soon after Aachan, Khan I went to the US, did my Diplomat American Board of Pediatrics and at that time I came back to why not come back home? Apne jagah pe wapas aaye aur apne logon ko hi khidmat kare. And so I decided to finally come back and uh, here I am in front of you all. So um, before I start my talk I just want to let you know that my talk will be very interactive. I'll try to involve you in the talk so that you understand things. Um, you should all have already gotten this handout. This handout is very informative, um, so don't try to write down things. When I talk about it, you will only try to write down things here. You don't need to write down anything. Everything is available to you here. Okay? Okay. First question is, why is it important? Why is it family physicians? For example, in Pakistan, it's a very common disease. Um, in the UK, it, the percentage is about 35% of all of the population has some symptoms of asthma. They did a study where the children who go to school at around 12 to 18 years of age, they reported their symptoms. And they saw that there are 35% symptoms. Hain. Studies which have been done in Pakistan show that the incidence is anywhere between 4.7 to 8 percent of our population has asthma. Pusipat, half of our population is pediatrics. Agar hamari sola crore ki abadi hai, usme aade to bache hai. So most of them you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing a lot of those children. And the most important thing uh, which I always feel is any doctor's role is logon ko hospital paunchne se bachana. Aur khas toh par asthma mein logon ko hospital paunchne se bachana bohat zaruri hai kyunke one hospitalization because of an asthma attack is a significant risk factor for death with further asthma attacks. Abhi Nasir ne baat ki hai ke ji MRCGP ki date aa gai hai. So I thought this was a good slide. Ke iske liye kiyo zaruri hai? Ek to MCQs mein they will ask you about the principles of treatment. Um, case scenarios bhi honge. Uh, the OSCE they will probably talk about what is reactive airway disease and what is asthma or in me difference kya hai. Use of nebulizers, proper use of inhalers, and proper use of peak flow meters, most likely. And how would you educate a family? So the aims and objectives of this talk. Kafi hai, mar itna lamba chora lecture nahi hoga. Ek to you to understand the pathophysiology of asthma, to identify the common triggers and preventive measures. Appreciate the diagnostic challenges you may face in children. What can be a problem to diagnose in children? Understanding peak flow meters. Awareness that asthma must be controlled. Not cured. Controlled. Familiarity with classification and the four steps in asthma treatment. Knowing when to step up your treatment and when to step down treatment. The proper use of inhalers with spacer devices. When to refer, uh, refer to a specialist. And the importance of patient education. So first of all, I thought I would open all of This is a normal person. This is a, uh, this is, these are pictures you see on bronchoscopies. And this is a normal person's airway on bronchoscopy. You can see it is open, wide, nice, clear, easily passed through air. 
This is an airway with asthma. Look at the red, inflamed, swollen airways. And in this case, the passageway is how much it is. It's almost like I usually use the comparison. Kisi straw se saans lene mein kitna mushkil hota hai. And that's what these asthmatics face. So let's talk about two case scenarios. Do bache hain. Ek a naam Tipu hai. Aur ek a naam Saira hai. Tipu is a one and a half year old who has difficulty feeding. Ma ka dood nahi le ra. Has respiratory distress. Tachycardia has a loud wheeze, has had many similar episodes before. The father smokes, has carpeted floors and stuffed animals. Tusi taraf Saira hai. She gets breathless, but she's able to walk. Um, pirti rehti hai. Talks in whole sentences, has a moderate wheeze. She does not play much. Dusre bachon ke saath khelti khulti nahi hai. Misses school because of illnesses. Symptoms get worse at night. Lives in inner city. Has an old house or dariyan bichai hui farsh pe. Kamro mein. So who has asthma and who has reactive airway disease? Right? What is it? Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways. These airways become hyper-responsive and patients start complaining of recurrent episodes of cough, wheeze, difficulty in, of breathing and tightness of the chest. Now, reactive airway disease is a classification which covers asthma as well as Children who may not have asthma. This is a very odd term. Hai. Reactive airway disease. KG is sensitive airways. Now, in children under 3 years of age, it is hard to differentiate that this is asthma or reactive airway disease. We have said that as they grow older, they will be 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 as they grow older. But that really isn't asthma. That was actually reactive airway disease. Okay? It's not a dumb thing. And people tend to be very sensitive. When they say that the child is dumb, all of a sudden, 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 it's not necessary that it's dumb. If you tell them that you have to take the drugs, you have to take the drugs for always. And in six years, there is no drug for any drug. And in six years, there is no drug for any drug. And in six years, there is no drug for any drug. Maybe it wasn't dhamma at all. And that's where reactive airway disease is the term which we try to use in younger children. And there's a reason. Ek to jo unki airways hai na, wo itne chote hai. To thodi si bhi viral infection hoti hai, mucus plugging hoti hai, ya kuch hoti hai, to their airflow gets compromised very rapidly. Thik hai? Dusa uni alveoli ya lung ke hisso mein collateral ventilation nahi hai. Jaysay hamne hume pata collateral blood supply. Ki ji achha agar is taraf se blood nahi ja rahi toh us taraf se blood chali jai ghi. In this case it's a collateral air supply. They don't have a good collateral air supply. Because their lungs are still growing. Decreased elastic recoil of the airways. Ki agar woh bade hote hai toh jaldi se woh chote bhi ho jate hai. And increased IgE levels. Everyone knows the value of IgE. It releases a lot of the cytokines and a lot of the inflammatory process. We know uh, by different studies that in children under two years of age, there is a higher level of IgE secreted. And therefore, their airways tend to be more reactive than others. Okay? What does this mean? मतलब ये है कि under three years of age, children may have reactive airway disease or asthma, but after usually the cutoff is three years of age. After that, only thirty percent. यहाँ पे unfortunately नजर इतना नहीं आ रहा, but this is thirty percent. Thirty percent of these children who may have symptoms of reactive airway disease or asthma actually only go on to have asthma-like symptoms. ठीक है। 
तो अब हमारे दो केस सिनेरियोज में किसको एजमा है और किसको रिएक्टिव एयरवे डिजीज है गुड एग्जैक्टली टीपू मे हैव रिएक्टिव एयरवे डिजीज और एजमा बट साइरा डेफिनेटली हैज एजमा ठीक है बड़ा सिंपल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड है होपफुली ओके नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द पैथ ऑफ Again, it's pretty simple. You have the smooth muscle over here. This is a normal lung. You have the good airflow into the alveoli and good airflow into the other parts of the lung. Yahan pe you have a small amount of mucus lining the airways. Magar jab asthma attack hota hai, look at the mucus increase increasing. Jiski wajah se air passage mushkil ho jata hai. Aur yahan tak ke kuch lung ke hisson mein एयर जाएगी भी नहीं एंड दिस इज वट हैपन्स टू एन एयर वे विद एन एजमा अटैक ठीक है अनदर वे टू लुक एट इट अ नॉर्मल ब्रॉन्क्योल इतना बड़ा एयर वे है इसका एंड ऑल ऑफ अ सडन एन एजमेटिक ब्रॉन्क्योल एयर वे बहुत छोटा हो जाता है एंड ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स विच वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड What are the signs and symptoms of asthmatics? They have recurring. Bar bar yehi loves bar bar aare. Recurring. Ki ek episode nahi, do teen episodes, multiple episodes, recurring episodes of cough, wheezing, chest tightness, and difficulty breathing. Saans lene mein dushwari. This is a real picture drawn by a child who has asthma. उसे पूछा गया है कि जब आपको asthma attack होता है, तो आपको क्या feeling होती है? ये जरा draw करके बताएँ. And this is a real picture. This is not कि मैंने खुद इसको draw किया. This is a real picture of him. And this is what he feels like, almost as if someone's choking him. Okay. Now. What are the triggers of asthma? One of the triggers are viral infections. Vi multiple viral infections especially respiratory syncytial virus which is called RSV get there. Because of the increased mucus secretion because of the hyperresponsiveness of the airways in children because of these multiple viral infections children may get asthma. Allergens डोमेस्टिक डस्ट माइट्स सब कहते हैं जी हमें डस्ट से एलर्जी है डस्ट से एलर्जी है दैट्स नॉट द सेम डस्ट अगर ऐसी बात होती तो हमारे बेचारे जो गांव में रहते हैं सारे लोग उनको तो आजमा ही आजमा होना चाहिए था मगर इट्स नॉट डस्ट एलर्जीज इट्स एक्चुअली एलर्जी टू द डस्ट माइट विच इज प्रेजेंट इन बेडिंग कारपेट्स और जो Your furniture which has fabric on it, जैसे ये furniture है जिसके ऊपर fabric चढ़ा हुआ है इनमें कभी आप मारे तो ठीक ठाक dust निकलती है ठीक है इन दैट्स वे यू मे फाइंड डोमेस्टिक डस्ट माइट्स एनिमल्स विद फर चाहे वो बिलियाँ हों चाहे डॉग्स हों एनी एनिमल्स विद फर कॉकरोचेस कॉकरोचेस आर वेरी हैव वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एलर्जेंस Um, pollen, obviously, molds, वो जो fungus थोड़ी सी उगती है खास तौर पर आजकल सावन के season में tobacco smoke, air pollution, strong emotional expressions in some children अगर वो बहुत ज़्यादा रोते हैं या बहुत ज़्यादा हंसते हैं उस वक्त भी उनको asthma का attack हो सकता है and obviously chemical irritants. Exercise induced. Thank you. Exercise induced asthma, cold weather, there are a, lo a lot of other risk factors as well. Um, the, a picture of a dust mite. Drawni si cheez lagti hai. So, what are the triggers in both of our case scenarios? Tipu me kya hai? So, father smokes. Carpeted floors. Stuffed animals. ठीक है, so those are the significant triggers in that. How about cider? Cider में कौन से triggers हैं? Good. Living in inner city because of the air pollution. 
and different chemical irritants. Good. Or old house. Old house because of molds. Can have molds in it, can have cockroaches in it. That may be a significant trigger. Duddies. Duddies may be their dust catchers. TK? Okay. Again, remember, asthma cannot be cured. It can be controlled very well, but it cannot be cured. So our aim in all of our management will be to control it to the best. That almost they're symptom free. Take it. Now, important thing, asthma is preventable. How? Jesse aap sab logon ko pata hai ki hamare jis mein genes hote hain. Some wo kehte hain ki there is a family predisposition for asthma. Agar ek sibling ko asthma hai, to dusre sibling ko zyada chances hain. Agar baap ko asthma hai, to beto mein zyada chances hain. Agar dono baap aur walda ko asthma hai, to bachcho mein zyada chances hote So there is a genetic predisposition for getting asthma. But at the same time, if you do not have exposure to those trigger factors, zaruri nahi hai ki aap asthma develop kare. Baat samajhai nahi. For example, agar aapke paas gene hai ek cheez ki, aap asthma, aapko pata hai aapke walid saab ko bhi asthma hai, aapki walda ko bhi asthma hai, thik hai. Magar aap ye jo sare trigger factors humne baat ki hai, if you don't have exposure, then you don't have asthma symptoms. So asthma can be prevented by preventing exposure to passive smoke, domestic dust mites, cockroach allergens, other environmental triggers, etc. Important thing to remember. This is a picture, you have this in your handout, it's a small exercise, okay? Um, it, you can see the different numbers, number 7, number 11, number 10, number 8. This is to highlight all the possible triggers which you may find in a house. And one of the things that we have done is that we have done a lot of triggers. So I'm not going to spend time pointing it out. You can do it in the At the leisure, you can do it in the leisure. Now, when to suspect asthma? If you have recurrent wheezing, cough, which is particularly worse at night, difficulty breathing, recurrent chest tightness and a family history of atopic diseases just may eczema hay fever asthma and other atopic illnesses okay again symptoms worsen at night they may awake uh, uh, get, wake the patient up so they will say what's that about um, exercise, viral infections, animals with fur, yeh wohi cheez dobara repeat ho rahi hai. Okay? Now, bachu mein kya masla hai? Wohi diagnostic dilemma ho sakta hai. Ho sakta hai bachche ko sirf, aapke paas bhi, aapne bhi bohat saare bachche dekhe honge, jin mein wheezing ki symptom hai, magar unko treat aap karte hai, jaisi pneumonia hai, yeh kisi aur tarikhe se aap treat kar le, toh woh thik ho jate hai. उनको एस्मा वाली मेडिसिंस की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती कुछ बच्चों को आपने ट्रीट किया होगा कि उसी तरह वीजिंग के साथ आते हैं और आपने ट्रीट किया ठीक हो गया बच्चा मगर तीन चार हफ्ते बाद फिर उसी तरह से वापस आया आपके पास वही सिम्टम्स लेके वही वीज के साथ वही सब कुछ के साथ दोस आर चिल्ड्रन व्हिच मे एक्चुअली बेनिफिट वो चिल्ड्रन हो सकते हैं जो फॉल करते हैं रिएक्टिव एयरवे डिजीज में and they may actually benefit from medications which are also used in asthma. Okay? So this diagnostic dilemma is. Some children who have asthma are wrongly diagnosed. They have pneumonia. They have a viral illness. And vice versa. They can go to the other side. And asthma usually is the one that says that the nose is a nose and the other side is a wheezing. Yeah, oh, nazla chati te bag ya. 
that may actually be symptoms of asthma in a young child. Again, acute shortness of breath, chest tightening, wheezes. But there are possibilities here. And this is where in children it may be different. Coop may be caused by it. Bronchitis, congestive heart failure, vocal cord dysfunction. These are all things wheezing can present present with The differential diagnosis is like this. Enlarged mediastinal masses. Sometimes in children lymphomas. They may present with wheezing. And they may have recurrent episodes of wheezing, which will get better with bronchodilators. Although it's a mediastinal mass, but it will be better with bronchodilators. Gastroesophageal reflux, worms, kiddo ki, but yahan pe hamare mulk mein to bahut sare bachche hain jinko pet mein kiddi hote hain. And if you look at the life cycle of the worm, lung se aata hai na? Khas wo round worms. So they may present as asthma, vascular wings and VSDs. Okay, going back to our case scenarios. So, one year old Salman, difficulty breathing, uh, feeding. This uh, is Salman. Respiratory distress, tachycardia, loud inspiratory wheeze, a barking cough. Symptoms appeared three days ago. It's the first episode in a winter season with carpeted floors and stuffed animals. What is this? Sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, reactive yeah, or any possibility is that this is the first episode. Coop. Thank you very much. Good. So this is Coop. This is again to highlight that not every child who comes wheezing is necessarily reactive airway disease or asthma. Saira ko toh humne pehle hi baat kar li thi. 8 year old Saira, breathless, unable to walk, ye sare symptoms. And she has recurrent episodes. Ye kaafi deh se ho raha isko. So again the word recurrent episodes should be important to you. Thik hai? Now everyone knows what this is. A peak flow meter. Unfortunately, I have to use a peak flow meter so I could show you how it's used. But I'm sorry I could not. But important thing to remember is peak flow meter needs your patient to be very cooperative. If you have to listen to your chest for 4 years, then what does he do? He doesn't give a chest. He's not very cooperative. So you're not going to get a four-year-old to do peak flows for you. Peak flow, sorry? He'll take it and take it. He'll take it. Okay, absolutely. So you need a cooperative child. What they recommend is peak flow meters should be used in over five years of age. Under five years of age, do not use peak flow meters. And you can judge your treatment or your symptoms just by the clinical history and your physical examination. Take it? So, peak flow meters. Now, the diagnosis, the proper diagnosis of asthma is on the basis of peak flow meters. I just want to bring your attention to this slide because this is a very important slide. That again, the diagnosis of asthma is based on peak flow meters or your peak flow readings. So it's reversible or variable airflow limitation measured by peak expiratory flow meters. If your peak expiratory flow increases by 15%, 20 minutes after using a short acting beta 2 agonist, it's asthma. What does this mean? That if I have used my peak flow first, my reading is 250. Okay? After that, I have used my bronchodilator and I have waited 20 minutes. After that, my reading is 360. That means I have asthma. Because my peak flow varied more than 15% after the use of a bronchodilator. Okay, next. 
peak flow peak expiratory flow readings vary more than 20 percent between morning and 12 hours later in patients taking a bronchodilator or 10 percent in those who are not using a bronchodilator so those scenarios are एक तो मैं ब्रोंकोडायलेटर नॉर्मली यूज करता हूँ अगर मैं नॉर्मली ब्रोंकोडायलेटर यूज करता हूँ उस सूरत में मैंने सुबह अपना पीक फ्लो किया 240 आया ठीक है शाम को 12 घंटे बाद मैंने फिर अपना पीक फ्लो मीटर इस्तेमाल किया उसके बाद मेरी 360 या 370 आ गई ठीक है that means the variability, again variable airflow limitation, the variability is more than 20% between morning and 12 hours later, any evening or night time readings. Or if I don't use bronchodilator, then you only need 10% of the difference. Okay? Peak expiratory flow decreases more than 15% after 6 minutes of running or exercise. My 360 when I come to your office, you have to use my peak flow. Then you have to go back and back. I came back and back for 6 minutes. I came back and my breath is going to be wheezing. I used peak flow then. And after that, my reading is around 220. So that means after exercise, my peak expiratory flow dropped by more than 15%. This is also diagnosing asthma. Diagnosis ho chuki. Okay? Okay, that was a heavy slide. Thor sa saans le lete. Next part of our talk, bade easy hai. <coughs> it will be mainly about um, your peak, uh, how to manage asthma. Or three four things are. One is inhalers. One is peak flow. Bachcho mein hum isliye nahi istemal karte. Bachcho leke baag jayenge. Humare peak flows ko. Or a diary, or some something we use to monitor symptoms of how we're treating asthma. So, what are the important points in controlling asthma? You want to educate the patients and the parents. Okay, involve the parents to help them manage their condition. You want to identify and teach them how to avoid triggers which may make asthma worse. You want to manage asthma in the long term. And selecting the appropriate medication, monitoring and modifying asthma care for effective long-term control and in the end treating asthma attacks which can happen in So what is involved in patient-parent education? Obviously actively involve the patients in the care plan. Okay? If you have to do this time, do this time, if it will happen, then you have to do this. Okay? Teach and rehearse the proper use of inhalers and spacer devices. I cannot stress how important it is about the proper use of inhalers. Avoid triggers, understand quick relief and preventive medications, and monitor the symptoms and the peak expiratory flows. Okay? When you have an asthma attack, who cares? A patient has a difference, right? No. Let's see. एक तो पेशेंट को इफेक्ट होता है, उसकी स्कूलिंग इफेक्ट होती है, ठीक है? वो स्कूल से दूर रहेगा, दूसरे बच्चों के साथ नहीं खेलेगा, नहीं बागेगा, उसको ऐसा से कम तरीका शिकार हो जाएगा, वो चुप करके कोने में बैठेगा, so it affects at a personal level. It affects a family unit. एक बच्चा बीमार होता है घर में, तो पूरा घर बीमार हो जाता है, क्योंकि � परेशान हो जाती है, वालिद वालिद परेशान हो जाता है, हो सकता है वालदा जॉब कर रही हैं, वो घर पे आ जाती हैं, वालिद अगर जॉब करे, वो भी हो सकता है घर पे आ जाए, हमारी फैमिली यूनिट्स थोड़े से बड़े होते हैं, दादी भी इफेक्ट हो जाती है, तो कहते हैं हाय अल्लाह बच्चे नू किये हो गया, 
ठीक है दादा को कहते हैं वो जी यार तुम ख्याल नहीं करते सो अ होल फैमिली यूनिट गेट्स अफेक्टेड एंड ऑब्वियसली द सोसाइटी ईच वन ऑफ अस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पर्सन ऑफ आवर सोसाइटी हम सब का अपना अपना इम्पैक्ट है इस सोसाइटी पे ओके okay, अगेन ये चीज़ें आपके हैंड में हैं परेशान मत हो दिस अदो लुक्स लाइक अ फुल स्लाइड इट्स वेरी इजी एंड आई एम गोन गो विद यू थ्रू इट स्टेप बाय स्टेप बहुत आसान स्लाइड है ये क्लासिफिकेशन है फॉर अंडर फाइव इयर्स ऑफ एज क्लासिफाई किसी भी एजमेटिक पेशेंट को करने के लिए आपको दो चीज़ें चाहिए एक तो डेली सिम्टम्स और एक नाइट टाइम सिम्टम्स सिर्फ दो चीज़ें ये डेली सिम्टम्स आ गए ये नाइट टाइम सिम्टम्स आ गए ठीक है ओके दस को राइट एट द बॉटम स्टार्ट हियर इफ द सिम्टम्स आर लेस देन वंस अ वीक एंड देर एज सिम्टमेटिक इन बिटवीन तो दैट्स माइल्ड इंटरमीडियंट एजमा ठीक है और इफ द नाइट सिम्टम्स आर लेस देन टू टाइम्स अ मंथ ये भी माइल्ड इंटरमीडियंट एजमा If the symptoms are greater than two times a month at night, or if the symptoms are more than once a week but less than once a day, <coughs> weekly symptoms होते हैं तो फिर it's mild persistent asthma. Again, moderate persistent asthma, daily symptoms, and attacks affect a uh, daily affect the activity. और द नाइट टाइम सिम्टम्स आर ग्रेटर देन वंस अ वीक फिर ये मॉडरेट प्रसिस्टेंट आजमा एंड सवियर प्रसिस्टेंट आजमा कंटिन्यूस सिम्टम्स एंड फ्रीकुंट नाइट टाइम सिम्टम्स इसमें बड़ी आसान चीज याद रखने वाली है माइल्ड मॉडरेट सवियर माइल्ड के ही दो डिफ्रेंशिएशन हैं एक इंटरमीडियंट है जिसमें ए सिम्टमेटिक रहते हैं और एक प्रसिस्टेंट है जिसमें सिम्टम्स आर मोर देन वंस अ वीक ठीक है ओके and this was for less than 5 years of age more than 5 years of age cheese wohi hai ye sara kuch wohi hai jo humne pichli slide mein baat ki hai sirf isme addition aa gayi hai peak flows ki because we can use peak flows in children greater than 5 we cannot use it in children less than 5 ye sara kuch aapke handout mein hai i'm not going to go over this theek hai so साइरा इस ये जो हमारी पहला केस सिनेरियो वाली पेशेंट है ये किस कौन से स्टेज में आती है याद है स्टेप फोर स्टेप थ्री स्टेप टू स्टेप वन माइल्ड मॉडरेट माइल्ड माइल्ड मॉडरेट सिवियर ये किस में आती है एनी वन मॉडरेट एनी वन एल्स severe persistent important thing to look at is does not play much so has limited physical activity and your limited physical activity pichli slide mein limited physical activity theek hai means step 4 severe persistent asthma theek hai which sir अब ये हमें स्टेप्स ये ये इसको क्लासीफाई करने की क्या ज़रूरत द रीज़न वाई इट्स सो इम्पोर्टेंट टू क्लासीफाई दीज पेशेंट्स इज दिस इज हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू ट्रीट दम इसी से आप फैसला करेंगे कि किसको कौन सी दवाई से शुरू करना है सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट आर आजमा मेडिकेशन जस्ट वेरी ब्रीफली क्योंकि आई एम श्योर ऑल ऑफ यू आर वेरी फेमिलियर विद दैम आपके शॉर्ट एटिक एक्टिंग बीडा टू एगनिस्ट्स में अल्ब्यूटोल टर्ब्यूटोलिन टूलोबीट्रॉल एंटीकोलिनर्जिक्स में एपोट्रोपियम इनहेल स्टीवर्ड्स में ये ओरल कोटिक स्टीवर्ड्स में पेडनेसलोन लॉन्ग एक्टिंग बीडा टू एगनिस्ट में सालमीट्रॉल एंटीहिस्टमिन में किटोटाफिन जैनथीन्स में थियोफिलिन और एसिफाइलिन एंड लॉन्ग लुकोट्राइन एंटाइगनिस में मॉन्टी लुकास्ट एंड जाफर लुकास्ट अगेन आपके लास्ट पेज ऑफ योर हैंड आउट यू हैव ऑल ऑफ दीज मेडिकेशन विद योर कॉमन पाकिस्तानी नेम्स एंड हाउ दे आर अवेलेबल प्लस मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंटली चाइल्ड डोसेजेस बच्चों में डोज कितनी देनी है ठीक है एंड दैट्स प्रॉबली माई नेक्स्ट स्लाइड 
it's the slide after this. Now, there's two types of asthma medications. We classify them two ways. One is long-term preventive medications, which we have to use for And one is short-term quick relief medications. This is just when you need to use it. Okay? And this is my slide. What is the biggest problem in children? What is the biggest problem in children? You have to weigh your patients. If you have a child who has 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 a child so it's very important to please weigh your children. Now, why used inhaled medications? Inhalers, we use them. Oral, why not? 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 Why जिस डोज से आपको फर्क पड़ना है ओरल मेडिकेशन से उसे वन टेंथ डोज में आपको फर्क पड़ेगा इनहेल्ड मेडिकेशन से हाई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द मेडिकेशन डिलीवर्ड डायरेक्टली टू द एयरवेज जब आप इनहेलर लेते हैं सीधा लंग्स में जाता है जब आप दवाई खाते हैं वो पहले आपके पेट में जाएगा पेट में फिर ब्लड स्ट्रीम से एब्जॉर्ब होगा फिर लिवर से पास होगा वो आपके पूरी बॉडी में फिरेगा फिर जाके लंग्स में पहुँचेगा you have potent therapeutic effects. Again, the first thing which I talked about. Or because the dose is less, so you have much less systemic side effects. Up inhaler. Again, you have the inhaler. Inhaler like that. And for that, I wanted to show you this. And here's when I want to demonstrate the proper use of inhalers. Okay, extremely important. Whenever you ask your patients to use an inhaler, please demonstrate this. Are they low galat istamal karte? Are they se bhi zyada galat istamal karte? Sabse pehle inhaler ko shake kare. I'm an asthmatic, that's why I'm using Ventolin. Theek hai? Sabse zyada pehle isko shake kare achi tara. Attach it over here. ये इतनी फैंसी चीज है मगर इतनी इतनी फैंसी चीज की जरूरत नहीं है दिस हैज अ वन वे वाल्व आपको शायद आवाज आएगी दैट्स अ वन वे वाल्व वर्किंग ठीक है आपने इसको शेक किया इसको यहां अटैच किया यू वांट टू पुट इट इन द माउथ विद अ सील अराउंड द माउथ ठीक है देन व्हाट यू वांट टू डू So you sprayed it twice into this inhaler, okay, and then you take five deep breaths. Sorry? Man, sorry, I'm not listening to you. When you press it, when you press it by the thumb, so there is no reason. Um, actually, the inhaler is made that when you breathe, you breathe. It releases the same amount of. मैं बच्चों की बात कर रहा हूँ। मैं थोड़ा भी दबाऊँ उतना ही रिलीज़ होगा। ज़्यादा ज़ोर से भी दबाऊँ उतना ही रिलीज़ होगा। ठीक है? It's a metered dose inhaler, MDI, जिसे कहते हैं। ठीक है? अच्छा जी। तो आपने ये किया? And that's your medication. ठीक है? अब फायदा क्या है? Look at the pressure. जब मैं इसको दबाता हूँ कितनी तेजी से निकलता है? ठीक है? यहाँ तक पहुँचा है? इतनी जल्दी? अब इतना distance मेरा pharynx तक है? Almost, maybe not. So when I push this, if I do not use a spacer device, 90% of your medication सीधा pharynx पे जाके लग जाता है और बात खत्म लंग्स में शायद ही 10% जाके लगता है। ये फायदा है स्पेसर डिवाइस का, ठीक है? 
please. Uh, you did like this. Okay, all right. Why don't you take a deep breath and exhale? Um, ask uh, the child to take deep breath like this. So, the more uh, absorption of the medication also really solved. No, that's okay. You're very right about the absorption of the medication, but the benefit of using an inhaler is you do, children do, cannot hold breaths. But children, it is a chit rike se apne breath hold nahi kar sakte. Ji? Isme wastage nahi hogi. You want to hold the breath when you're using the inhaler like this. Us fuck you want to hold the breath. But when you're using a spacer device, you do not need to hold the breath for that long. And bache nahi pakar sakte apna breath it ni deer kili. Exactly. As long as the child can hold it, sure. And it's a good it's a it's a better way of giving the medication. But many times children may not be able to. Tike? I'm sorry? Five deep breaths are enough to take all of the medication in. Um, there's really no benefit of taking more than five breaths as long as there are five good deep breaths. Um, you can do it for much longer, but the amount of medication which you're actually taking in after those five breaths may not be that significant. Some people recommend you press it once, take those five breaths, and then press it again, take another five breaths. You can also do this it all together. Press it twice or three times according to what is recommended by your doctor. So if you recommend that two puffs twice a day, you can two puffs and give it to one another and give it to another. Okay? Now this was a fancy thing. A simpler and to talk about children. It has been proven in studies for children under 10, uh, up, to, up to 10 months of age that they can use an inhaler properly. How? Ab oxygen bhi dete na ko. Simple face mask. Simple face mask, okay? They just use the face mask and then you use the inhaler in a similar way. Yes. And the important thing to remember is the proper use of inhaler is as effective as using a nebulizer. We log nebulizer recommend karte bacho mein, but if you use an inhaler properly, it is as effective as using a nebulizer. Tike? Is it similar to the inhalers containing Yes. They should be given on the same medium for five Yes, they can, any inhaler, any inhaler can be used in the same way. Uh, what? Uh, how many puffs or? It's the same. The dosages are different. The concentration of the medication is is different. For example, inhaled corticosteroids are different than the others. Okay, and we'll talk about that. I'll take your questions in just a minute. Uh, I just got my sign that I have ten minutes left, so I'm just going to be finishing my presentation. But a simpler way and a more effective way, sorry. Ye pani ki bottle. Simple pani ki bottle. You need a 500 ml volume in order to give, use the proper use of an inhaler. TK it doesn't have to be itna fancy spacer device. Dust rupee ki pani ki bottle aati hai. Piche garam churi ke saath kaat le. Aur ye inhaler lag jata hai ispe. And it can be used as a spacer device. But <laughs> again, again, go face mask, nahi hai, simple cup. So, mangi cheezon ki zururat itni nahi hai. Okay. Again, demonstrating how children can very, very well, easily use inhalers. Theek hai, itna mushkil nahi hai. Sirf hume samajhne ki zururat hai. Okay. Now, we're almost to the end of my presentation, so just bear with me. Again, this slide is in your handout, so you don't have to worry about it. Just follow me. Just follow me when I'm talking. 
first look at these are the steps which we talked about okay this is a quick relief notice in the quick relief in all these steps ye sare inhaled beta 2 agonists hain bada simple seedha seedha quick relief mein sare inhaled beta 2 agonists these all you want to use when needed as needed theek hai very simple this is for treatment over 5 years of age now in mild intermittent usually none is needed you usually need no medication but in cases where you may have exercise induced asthma you may use anti leukotrienes ye wo leukotriene inhibitors hain jo monte leukast aur zafir leukast hain mild persistent may you can use either an inhaled corticosteroid or monte leukast or an or zafir leukast theek hai एंड ये स्टेप वाइज ऊपर जा रहे हैं इसमें सिर्फ अगर जरूरत पड़े तो आप मार्टिलोकास्ट इस्तेमाल कर लें इसमें या आप इन हेल्थ कोडिकोस्टिवाइड इस्तेमाल कर लें या यू कैन यूज एंटी लुकोट्राइन नेक्स्ट स्टेप स्टेप थ्री सॉरी अलॉन्ग विद शॉर्ट एक्टिंग एज नीडेड जब हम कंट्रोल की बात करते हैं कोशिश हम हमारी यही होती है कि हम शॉर्ट एक्टिंग ना ही जरूरत पड़े मगर कभी कभी अगर जरूरत पड़ती है तो आप शॉर्ट एक्टिंग ले सकते हैं नेक्स्ट स्टेप अगेन इन हेल्थ कोडिकोस्टिवाइड्स एंड इसमें एंड अगर इन हेल्थ कोडिकोस्टिवाइड्स इस्तेमाल करें तो एंटी लुकोट्राइन एड कर लें अगर एंटी लुकोट्राइन इस्तेमाल करें कर रहे तो इन हेल्थ कोडिकोस्टिवाइड सो यू हैव टू यूज बोथ ठीक है एंड इन सिवियर प्रसिस्टेंट द ओनली एडिशन इज यू कैन यूज कोडिकोस्टिवाइड टैबलेट्स और सिरप for a short period of time in order to break that cycle or you can use a low dose on alternate days to have a long lasting effect theek hai but a simple straight forward now again this is now treatment in children less than 5 years of age theek hai again look at this side quick relief medications in saaron mein wohi beta 2 agonists hain but instead of uh, inhalers mainly isme aap syrups bhi istemal kar sakte hain tablets bhi istemal kar sakte hain under 5 years of age theek hai long term preventative medications mein again step 1 mein none is needed isme exercise wali baat hi nahi hai ki 5 saal se kam umar bachche hain theek hai so none is needed again same thing as the other side except for this dusri side pe humne dekha tha mild persistent mein you can use either an inhaled corticosteroid or a anti leukotriene theek hai yaad hoga pichli slide mein humne yahi dekha tha अब इसमें यू कैन ऑल्सो यूज ए टू मंथ ट्रायल ऑफ कीटोटाफिन नाउ हेयर इज समथिंग विद कॉशन दिस दीज आर रेकमेंडेशन बाय द पाकिस्तान पीडियाट्रिक अकेडमी पी पी ए की जो रेकमेंडेशन है वो ये हैं ओवरऑल थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड देर इज नो रोल ऑफ कीटोटाफिन इन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ आजमा वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू रिमेंबर बट बिकॉज वी मे नॉट हैव दीज मेडिकेशन अवेलेबल और इन पाकिस्तान these medications may be out of the normal range of our patients khareedne ki baat kar raha hu theek hai na to you may use ketotafen theek hai uh step 3 mein wohi baat again inhaled corticosteroids and an anti leukotriene aur isme wohi baat aagi inhaled corticosteroids anti leukotriene oral steroids and you may also used nebulized budesonide which is also an inhaled corticosteroid ठीक है ओके अगेन मैनेजिंग एज माई लॉन्ग टर्म स्टार ट्रीटमेंट एट अ हायर लेवल हमेशा जोर से मारे हैं उसको ठीक है वो कहते हैं किसी को आपने काबू करना है तो पहले जोर से मारो बाद में जो मर्जी कर लें बाद में भाग जाए या जो कुछ भी करना है ठीक है इसी तरह वन यू ट्रीट एजमा यू वन स्टार्ट एट अ हायर लेवल एंड देन यू मे इफ कंट्रोल इज अचीव or sustained which is usually for a month you can step sorry this should be uh uh sorry this is step up if control is not achieved for one month or if control is achieved for three months then you can step down theek hai and the goal is to decrease treatment to the least medication classification of asthma this is the severity of asthma theek hai this is for acute attacks this again is also in your handout the management of asthma attack at home or in the clinic this is also in your handout so i'm not going to go over this but it's very very basic 
things not to do. I'm almost finishing. I'll just have one more slide after this. Sedatives na istamal kare bacho mein. It causes respiratory depression. Okay? And children may actually get worse. Mucolytics. Ye jo mucolytic sachet aata hai. Many times it may actually worsen asthma rather than getting it better. If you think about it, Zain may aata hai ki mucus yada ban raha hai, isliye plugging ho raha hai, to agar hum mucolytic denge, to wo thik ho jayega. It actually acts like an irritant. So it actually may think, make things worse. Chest physiotherapy nahi karni hai isme. Large volumes of fluid, again in children, because they have a rapid respiratory rate, okay, they blow off a lot of water and they may become dehydrated just from an asthma attack. So they may need extra fluid and antibiotics. You do not need antibiotics for the treatment of asthma unless there's another complicating factor. When to consult a specialist? When the clinical conditions are complicating asthma, sinusitis, hai, pneumonia, hai, or muscle, hai, congestive heart failure, hai, congenital cardiac disease, hai, saath, or sati asthma. Hai. When patients do not respond optimally to therapy, that you have step 1, step 3, 2, step 3, step 4, ke hai, magar nahi sahi hora, or when the treatment is at step 3 or step 4. Yes? Sorry, sedatives nahi deni chahiye. Um, the important thing to remember, if I understand your question, question is that the sedatives should not be given, but the child is irritable, when the asthma attack is done, and then when you give B2 agonists, they are more irritable. Yeah. So, that's the question? Yeah. Okay. The important thing is that when the child, the child is irritable because of his difficulty of breathing, because he is not getting the breath right. So what we're doing by giving sedatives is, we don't see the breath right, we don't see the breath right. We don't see the irritability, so we have given sedatives. What will the sedatives be with sedatives? That the respiratory rate is fast, right? So it will slow down his respiratory rate. He have, will have more chances of going into respiratory failure. So it's better not to use the drug. If the child is properly treated with your bongo dialy, then it will settle your irritability. So what is the rule of the Sorry? It is not recommended in asthma. An af uh, uh, an as far as I understand, it's an antidepressant. Tofanil, right? It's not recommended in the treatment of asthma. Again, you do not want to cause, you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to mask the symptom. You don't want to mask the symptom, you don't want to disease. If you have opened his lungs and airways and the rest of it is done, then the child will be settled. Okay? Last slide. Most important slide. Eventually, what do we want to say that all our children say, yes, I have asthma, but I have not asthma. Okay? So I have asthma, but asthma does not have me, 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 and me. Thank you.